Good morning. <clears throat> okay, I have a frog in my throat, goodness. So, it's Tuesday today and um, I'm bringing seeds down. These are everything that's getting started tomorrow, probably. So I'm bringing these down to the greenhouse sunroom area. Um, I'll get some things prepped for that today. But I'm also gonna go check on these little lambs. I shared this in my stories this morning. Um, taking care of bottle babies, it's challenging. I'm not gonna lie. We have no idea exactly what, well actually, we just don't have the exact idea of what <laughs> these lambs are, what kind they are. Uh, we don't know if they got colostrum from mama. One is now about seven weeks old, the other's probably about three. And they're doing good. Um, the littlest one has a, just a touch of scours, nothing crazy. Just, I think for me, a little bit overfed. So we gave her a little bit of electrolytes and she's already improving. Um, the other one, I don't know. It's just so hard to figure out. We're on such a learning curve with these guys that I, I wish I knew everything that was exactly going on. That would be helpful. I wish I could, oh my goodness, the sunroom smells a little bit like a, a livestock stall. I'm not going to lie. Um, all that to say, I've been kind of, I've been keeping them close by either where Willow is or where I am, just so I can watch their behavior to see, to, does anything change? Does anything get worse? Does anything get better? We did give them, hello, here, let me show you. So my, uh, sunroom smells a little bit like a livestock stall, but that's okay. Um, they're drinking water, they're doing the good things, I don't know, it just, I don't know, maybe intuition, maybe not. I'm not really sure. I'm just not sure if all is well with both of them. In so many ways, I feel like I'm a new mom again. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? Is this normal? Is this not normal? And I'm sure all will be fine, but at the same time, any time, I think I've said this before here, any time we add a new animal, we learn, 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 learn which is helpful. The books are so helpful. We've learned so much from books and I'm thankful for, I'm very thankful for them as a resource. But until you get your hands dirty, so to speak, and do the work, some of it just doesn't always make sense. So I feel like that's what we're doing right now is we're doing the work and then you notice little behavior differences, but they also are lambs. So, I mean, they're going to keep growing and changing and they're going to become actually more mellow. Um, not so, you know, jumpity and different things. So it's just interesting. Anyway, all but to say, I wanted to get eyes on them, deliver the seeds down there. And I'm actually going to go check on some, um, chickens and ducks and everybody. My kids have had more eyes on people lately or people. <laughs> we call our animals people now. <laughs> They've had more eyes on just all the little critters lately than I have just because I've been busy with other things and they just report back to me. So it's helpful having kids that care and want to do that. But I'm kind of the one that keeps track of all of, oh good glory, it's such a muddy mess everywhere. I'm the one that kind of keeps track of all the health of the animals. So you can only report so much until it's like, I just need to see everybody. Okay, here's their treat. I started giving them their treat on the compost pile. So they will keep warming everything up for us. And they love it. Here you go, everybody get in. There's enough for everyone. <laughs> hey, Gertie. Gertie took flight this morning. I'm not sure if Gertie's always gonna stick around. She flew pretty far into our backyard this morning. It's kind of in her nature. You do your thing, girl. And I have to just check on bunnies really quick, which we need to give you an update. Why is that not focusing? There we go. We need to give you an update on Little Miss Opal. I'm not gonna do it right now, but I do wanna give you an update on Opal soon. Um, let's see, all are well. So right now the sheep have been in the same stall as the, um, bunnies they're fine together i mean the, the bunnies are in cages but they've been out together that's usually it's not it hasn't been a problem at all the only thing is as these sheep are getting bigger they're peeing a lot more so we're gonna separate them this week by the end of the week give myself a couple more days um 
just as the weather gets warm, I don't want it to smell super strong of ammonia. So, and we got this going on. This is a birthday present, and it has been a blast. Now that the weather is changing. Today, here's what we're doing. Every time I post anything about making bread, um, people ask me questions. What do you recommend? Do you have books you recommend? Do you have recipes that you love? So today, I'm gonna share that with you. I need to make bread today anyway, and I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and turn the camera on. The recipe will end up being down in the description, but um, I'm gonna walk you kind of through how we do bread. We made it inside, got animals situated, and some kids had to go certain places, so anyway, here we are. So I'm not gonna do this as like a step-by-step, hour-long tutorial. I'm Rather, I'm gonna kind of walk you through what I do, piece the clips together, and then have the recipe down low. You can always message me and ask me questions, but it's a really simple bread recipe, and the biggest thing I can tell you with bread is just do it. And the reason why is if you just start the process of attempting, it's gonna build your confidence. I'm going to do what we use for our sandwich bread. Oh, and, oh, the other thing, this is not sourdough. I love sourdough bread. I've not fully mastered sourdough bread to the point of I love it, but I don't, not all my kids love it. So, um, I don't really get hung up over that. I would encourage you, if you are just new to starting bread or to attempting to make bread, don't start with sourdough. If you are disappointed in your first loaf, you will have spent so much time in just getting it there that like wait to do sourdough until a little bit later. Start with something like this. So this is just what we use for sandwiches. And it's bread, but I actually make it into rolls so that it's just super simple for my kids to grab them and make them and go. Um, I also, would you grab me, how am I doing? I need? I need three eggs and I need the yeast and you can grab sugar and salt. Um, so we, I have two bread recipes that I go to all the time. This one, which is like a sandwich bread, like I said, and then my grandma's recipe for French bread. It is, that one is probably my favorite. It doesn't work well for sandwiches because it is a crusty loaf, but I love that when we're when we want bread at dinner time. Um, so these are my go-tos. Like I said, my recommendation to you, if you are new to the bread world and making bread from scratch, is don't start with sourdough. Just save that for a little bit. Build up your confidence. Practice with loaves that do not take forever, and then go from there. I also have been practicing this last year with mixing different types of flours. So anything that I'm doing right now, no. Like I typically mix an einkorn flour with a regular white bread flour. I really like the mixture together. Just plain white flour can kind of upset stomachs for some of my kids, not all. We don't have anybody that's celiac, but we do have a couple kids that are gluten sensitive. One was severely when she was younger. Um, so when I mix them, that's what my kids like the best, that's what I like the best. If I just do einkorn, it's so dense. I kind of have to practice with some things, but I don't love that. But when I when they're together, I love them. So just know, you can do this with just regular flour, you could do it with einkorn flour, you could do it with wheat flour, or you can mix your flours. Like I said, we don't have anybody that is celiac. But one thing I do if I have time is, is I will let the dough rise twice, well actually three times total. I'll probably end up doing that today. Um, and I feel like that helps break down the gluten structure that's going, so it makes it easier for you to digest. So that's something that you can always do. That won't work for celiac, but that will work like for gluten sensitivity um, people and it's just helpful. So just a little side tip there. So here we go. The best thing that you can do when you're learning bread is to remember this. You're gonna, you want your water warm. You don't want it hot. If you have your water too hot, that you want it a little bit warmer than that. Um, if you have your water too hot, it will kill your yeast. If you do not have it warm enough, it's just gonna take forever for your yeast to do its job. So warm water 
and then I have a glass four cup measure. You don't have to, I've done it with my plastic ones as well, but it's my favorite one. So I will put in my water, I will put in uh, my yeast, I will put in my sugar, I will put in my salt, and this particular recipe just has a little bit of oil in it as well. That's perfect. Um, I put all that in there and I let it sit for a couple minutes. When you do that, you're activating your yeast. You're getting it ready to go to help make your flour rise. So for this, it's warm water, three cups of warm water, three tablespoons of oil, three eggs. Um, this is for our size family. So I will put both versions down there. You can do half of this. Um, three tablespoons of yeast. Uh, this is a cup of sugar. I'm working with about 11 cups of flour though, so just so you know, split that out and it's really not that much. Um, and salt, right? Is that everything? I think that's everything. Again, the recipe will be down, down low. In what? These are, this? you're gonna put it in the water. Mm -hmm. So you put the yeast into the water, three tablespoons. These are my helpers today. Uh, they like making bread with me. So do my little ones, but they're gone right now. Go ahead, one, two, three. This is what's happening right now. The yeast starts getting kind of frothy almost. That's exactly what you want. It's starting to already work. So I just let that sit for a couple minutes. Once the yeast is done after a couple minutes, then I'm gonna um, crack my eggs in there. The eggs, the sugar, the oil is what makes this a little bit of a softer bread as opposed to a French bread. So it does have more ingredients even though it's a very simple bread recipe, but it's why I think my kids like this for making sandwiches and it stays soft. There's no preservatives in it, nothing like that, um, but it is what helps it to be soft. So there you go. I almost forgot to tell you the other reason we have a dog going crazy. Hold on a minute. The other reason why um, you want to use warm water is it also helps the sugar dissolve. I use an organic cane sugar. I've used a lot. I mean, I've used plain white sugar. On, in all honesty, I've used different types of sugar. The type of sugar doesn't matter. It does its job. Um, but the warm water does help it dissolve, which is what you want. So, especially if you're using an organic cane sugar, um, it's a little bit what do you grittier. So you want you do want that to dissolve. So another another benefit of doing the warm water. So from here we will take turns rotating flour, two kinds of flour, and then the liquid mixture. And I'll just pop all the eggs in somewhere along the line. I use my KitchenAid mixer. My KitchenAid mixer is 20 years old. I got it as a shower gift before I got married. It is working so like a champ. I love my KitchenAid mixer when you have the bread hook. You can do all of this by hand. You don't need that. But if you do have the KitchenAid mixer, it will, with the bread hook, it's, here's the bread hook. For those that don't know, this is what a bread hook looks like. It does all of the kneading for you. If you do not have um, a mixer that has this, there's other type of mixers that you can use, um, but you can technically do it all by hand as well. I remember watching my grandma do that. So it's, you are fully, um, and she's the one that taught me everything I know. Like someone asked me this past week, um, do, you, do you wanna pop that back on? Do you have a book I don't have that I recommend? I don't, I don't have a bread book that I recommend um, because I learned from my grandma. I remember spending so much time in my parents' restaurant in the bakery with her, also at her house. Um, her house always smelled like fresh bread and cinnamon rolls and different things. So that's who I learned from. So that's what I'm, well, the things that I'm telling you are the things that she told me. So any, any of this can be done. You'll just have really strong arms. Maybe that's good if you're making bread. Um, but you can do all of it completely by hand. You'll just want to knead over and over and over and over again. So, but the kitchen and mixer is amazing. And actually my grandma, towards the end of her life, she started, well, maybe not towards the end of her life, but the last, I don't know, she she finally got a KitchenAid mixer and she loved it for bread as well. Okay, so the flour's in here. I'm cracking egg. I almost, they're already cracked. Just gonna put some of the liquid in here. Yes, I am a messy baker. I take full responsibility for that, or ownership of that. So right now I have about two-ish cups. We're gonna need probably two more of just regular flour. I'm gonna use about four to five cups of the einkorn flour. So I'm mixing, but again, you can just use plain white flour. If that's all you have, at the end of the day, just make the bread. 
I don't go much off of stir from the mixer speed. I don't do a fast speed um, at all. You don't, I don't think you really want to with bread. So we're just rotating. I know. I, I owned it. I told them that I'm a, a messy baker. Pretty sure you might be too. So right now I have approximately, so I double this recipe. Um, everything I told you is doubled, is what I'm trying to say. So and by the end of this, this is going to be quite overflowing. Another bread tip for you, do not overmix it. If you overmix it, it does get tough. And the, while the flavor might still be there, it'll it, your bread one will not last as long, and it will just be. You don't want a tough dough. You also don't want an an insanely sticky dough either. Right in the middle, like you can be able to touch it and move it without it being um, too firm, but also without it sticking to your hands. That's the whole goal. I'll show you in a minute. This is too sticky. Can you see it? I'm trying to get it to. There we go. This is too sticky. Do you see how it sticks to my hands? You don't want that. So I'm, I'm going to slowly add, right now I'm at approximately, that would be four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm at eight cups. And I know I'm usually around 10. So I'm gonna slowly add the second two cups because I, I do not want it to get tough. This is perfect. You can touch it. I mean, if I continue to touch this, yeah, I am gonna get dough on my hands. But you can touch it still super squishy and not really get much on my fingers that's the perfect consistency that you want when i get to this point as well i usually take it out and i do a little bit of kneading because my kitchen aid is not the biggest size <laughs> it's just the normal size but when i do this type of bread uh, I kind of need to knead it at the end. And all I'm doing is just rolling it around and pushing it under. Hey, Irish. No. She's barking at the sheep right now. Okay. That's perfect. That's great. Don't overthink it. Just set it in here. And now I'm going to put a clean towel over it. This is, you can see how much that fills. Hey, guys, I want to let the dog out. Once this gets just like bulging over the top, I'll show you. I'll punch it down. I'll let it rise since I do, like I said, you gotta have the time to do it. From there, you could go ahead and make your loaves, let it rise again, and pop it in the oven. But I'm gonna punch it down, let it rise again, do the exact same thing. The second rise is always much faster. Then I'm gonna go ahead and make the um, rolls. And then um, that rise is actually super short, maybe 15 to 25 minutes. And then pop it in the oven. While we wait for the bread to rise, we go feed a lamb, a bottle baby. It is crazy being these little guys. They love their bottle. Uh oh, she, the other one sees. Oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> we actually don't want, she, we're trying to wean her right now. She's about ready to be done and uh, she does not like it. <laughs> when decided he wanted to cook lunch outside today. He's cooking deer brats, which I'm not a massive fan of them, but this does look delicious. It does look real good, buddy. Here we go. I'm gonna punch it down for the first time. You can see it is, I could let it go a little bit longer, but since I'm doing the second one, I'm just gonna go ahead and punch it down. Kinda hard to do one-handed. <laughs> so now we're going to form these into rolls. I punched it down again, just so I can make it to work with. Um, and I form them into rolls just by continuing to go under, 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 until it looks about like this. Sorry, you can't even see what I'm talking about. All right, come on, there we go. It looks about like that. The bottom looks like that, that's okay. It will actually flatten as it cooks. I mean, it doesn't matter how uniform they are, that's up to you. <laughs> Sometimes I do some a little bit smaller for my younger ones. Um, just whatever.
Okay, Deeks is with me now. We are been in and out of side set timers on my phone for these rolls. Let me show you the first ones. The first pan that came through, I put them in for 20 minutes. Woo! They just came out. Look at how golden and lovely and perfect they look. Should we try a bite on camera? Oh, so good. They are really hot. I'm going to put, okay, so instead of butter, and butter is delicious, but I'm actually out. Oh, no, I might have a little bit of butter left. One other thing that we made today, though, is homemade mayo. More on that later. I'm just telling you, though, homemade mayo, there is nothing, nothing like it. It's not the same as store-bought mayo. Mm, that's good. Absolutely delicious. So, anyway, that's all for today. We have things that we need to go do. Little babies that want to go outside. Let me know if you make it. Let me know if you try the recipe. Let me know if you have any questions. I would love to hear them. But this, it is tried and true. We make these a lot. We love them. You, again, you can shape it as a loaf. You can make them into rolls like I do. I think Willow likes them. And anyway, so thank you for joining me with all the bread making today. It was fun. It was been a little bit crazy here, but I'm glad that we got it done. And so I hope you enjoy it and that you can bless your family as well with homemade bread because there is truly nothing like it. It is heavenly. I even think that it like draws people in. That's just my opinion though. Anyway, all right, have a good day. We'll see you next time.